Hello all, welcome to Spiritual Essence. Well, because we have gotten on the subject of astral projection and astral magic, we are going to be diving into more of that topic and all the things you could do because literally, you are the only thing standing in your way of achieving what you want when it comes to the astral. The only limit is your imagination. And anything you think you can do, you can. And anything you can't, you think you can't do, it's not going to happen. And um, the astral is a mixture in, in ways where it mixes the spiritual realm and different dimensions along with one's own mind. And if one can manipulate their imagination and their third eye into entering further into the void, which is the spiritual realm, the amount of power you will hold in your grasp will intensify. And it's something that I'm still learning, but I have discovered has something incredible incredible to teach us all. Now, um, it, I'm sure that uh, if you're watching this, I am not the only one who has sleepless nights. Um, usually I stay up late, but it still takes me a while to actually get to sleep. That's why I don't go to bed early, because then it feels like I, I never get to sleep. Plus, I'm used to working late anyway. But um, whatever your situation may be, I'm sure there are people who, just because their head hits the pillow, doesn't mean they can automatically go to sleep. And uh, you can use that to your advantage. I use a technique, and this is a technique that I will teach you in another video, to fall asleep sometimes. And uh, it's basically where I have created my own world, and it's a world that I've used ever since I was a child. Uh, what me and my best friend used to do when we uh, played make-believe, I have maintained this world for so long, even as an adult. I still have little adventures in this world. Now, while that may sound childish to some, it is actually a great practice for power, and it does help me get to sleep telling these stories of this world using certain characters and it's it's just really cool but i'm going to teach you that technique in another video the technique i'm going to teach you in this video is uh something a little bit more simple i would i would say simple so um to do this all you need is to just Go through your normal sleep schedule, you know, prepare yourself for bed, put on your uh, most comfortable jammies, brush your teeth, I don't know. Um, if you're one of those people who falls asleep, you know, watching the TV, this may be a little hard for you to do because this requires um, nothing in the background. Now, if you're a person like me who sleeps with the fan, that's okay, because that is a white noise instead of uh, actual detailed background noise. Uh, listening to music, uh, maybe like on your iPod, um, maybe on a playlist, I would suggest that you turn it into um, sound effects, maybe like relaxing sound effects, running water, uh, f bonfire crackles, crickets, you know, things that people would listen to to lower their blood pressure. Uh, or instrumental, soft instrumental music and or binaural beats. Um, those would be fine, but um, if you don't sleep with the fan on, you know, that's fine too. So not a, uh, it's surprising that not everyone sleeps with a fan. It feels like everyone does. But <laughs> anyway, 
So, once your head hits that pillow and you start to get comfy, you feel just comfy enough to feel relaxed, but you don't feel totally relaxed enough to fall asleep. You are going to see in front of you, in your mind's eye, all this will be happening within your mind. You are going to see a world around you surrounded by nothing but black. The only thing that will stand out to you is the floor, which is like very shallow water. And when you look down, you will not only be able to see your reflection in the water, but you're going to be able to see your bare feet. And you are going to move yourself using your mind. You're going to take normal steps as if you were awake walking across this water. You don't feel wet because you are stepping on top of the water instead of going through it. So basically, the laws of reality do not exist in this plane. You look around, you see nothing but just a deep black void. Almost like looking at outer space without the stars. The only thing you see is the water. <clears throat> Shallow water. And the water also is completely black. You're going to take a few steps forward into this void. Though... You know, no matter how much you walk, no matter how far, it's only going to be the same thing. This is an endless void. Now, hold out your hand. You will actually feel another part of yourself, as if your hand was out physically. But your hand is either resting against your pillow, or down at your sides. But you will still feel another part of you holding your hand out. And you will see it in your mind's eye. You will see your arm outstretched and your hand. You will notice the detail of all your fingers, the fingernails. Now, slowly, a light, it could be any color you want, is going to start to manifest around your hand. And you are going to feel this energy. You're going to feel something form. And you're going to concentrate on this light. Do you see it? It's slowly forming into something. Now, what is it going to form into? That is you, your will to decide, your choice. For example, it is going to form into an apple. Now, take a look at this apple in your mind's eye. Does it look as pristine as wax fruit does? Is it the most perfect apple you've ever seen? Almost like in the cartoons, where it looks really, really shiny and taut, and it looks like the juiciest apple you've ever seen. And you can do anything you want with this apple. If it's not big enough, make it grow bigger, and you'll see it, and you'll feel it. If it's too big... Make it shrink down. You could even make it shrink down to the size of a pebble. If it's not the color you want, make it a different color. Why can't it be a blue apple or a purple apple? Ooh, purple apples. I would like to try one of those. You could even try to eat this apple. Yes, visualize yourself taking the apple in your hand and taking a bite out of it with your astral mouth. Use your astral mouth to slowly chew upon this apple 
to taste its sweetness. Does it taste like an apple on this plane or does it taste like something else? Does it taste like another fruit? Does it taste like something that you've never tasted before? These details are important and they're helping you manipulate energy in the astral. Believe it or not, you are actually in the astral when you do this. And the um, the longer you go through these slight sleep meditations, the stronger you can get. Now, I know I've said that when you uh, go into the astral, it's best to meditate upright instead of laying down. And I understand that. In fact, I do this um, after I meditate. So I'll go through my meditations like usual, I'll finish up, I'll write down my experiences, and then I'll get ready and go to sleep and I'll go through another one. But this meditation is different. I don't go to the astral garden. This is where I go, into this void where anything can happen. Now, making these changes to this apple they take a lot out of you, even though you're you're basically relaxing and asleep. Do they weigh heavy on your mind, just trying to change little things about it, like its look, texture, or color? That's because it is. Because it takes a lot more detail, a lot more energy to make this detail. Now, you're going to see the apple disappear instantly in a puff of smoke gone. Now I want you to try manifesting the apple again, but this time just see it instantly pop up in your hand the way you want. Doesn't that feel different? Slightly different? You could even do a side by side. You can even try to slowly manifest one apple in your, uh, in your left hand and instantly pop one up in the right. Now you're gonna notice that your left hand is, um, it's gonna feel heavier and it's gonna maybe feel a little weaker after this. Meanwhile, your right hand is going to feel lighter and you know, it's uh, the apple itself is going to feel a lot more lighter. And you know why? Because you put more energy into forming this energy into an apple than you did just making it appear. The reason I had you slowly make it up is because it adds practice. It basically is experience on your spiritual resume. Anyone can just make anything appear, but the stronger influence you have over energy, the stronger you are going to get. Now I'm trying to teach you things that could possibly manifest into marvelous things that you never thought could happen. But it all starts with putting in the work. But uh, if you notice the difference, then good job. If not, keep working on it. But don't stop there. Do not stop there. You're still in this void. Now, here's a a very good one. I want you to summon an obelisk. If you don't know what an obelisk is, it's this. They were used in ancient Egypt. And I believe it um, it had something to do with the sun. But I'm I can't remember exactly what purpose the obelisk served. But I want you to focus in on this obelisk. <clears throat> what is it made out of? Stone? Alabaster? Brick? Sandstone? Is it made out of a material that you've never seen before? Does it have any carvings on it? Any symbols? Writing? And how big is it? You can make it small, very small, sh like short, or you can make it towering above you. So far that you have to move your astral head and look up 
just to see how tall it is. And it may still be coming out of the ground. But my advice would be try to make it decent size. Maybe a few feet at best. Five, six feet. All right, so focus in on this obelisk, but keep it there. Now, I want you to summon another one right alongside it. Make it the same length and make it exactly, a, basically a copy of the one that's in front of you. Now, once it is there, continue to hold it in your mind. Now, on the other side of the obelisk, I want you to create another one. One that looks exactly the same as the other two obelisks. Now, once that appears, keep all three <clears throat> and focus in on all three of them. Is it hard for you? Do you feel like a slight pressure along your third eye, which is basically the center of your forehead, like around this side of your head that is because you are not used to focusing in on multiple forms of energy at a time you may even like suffer a small headache and if you do suffer a headache stop just make them disappear and the headache should go away and that pressure su uh, should subside but what I basically taught you is how to focus and maintain energy. First, I taught you how to build up energy. And then I had you focus and maintain objects made from this energy. And if you um, haven't suffered any of those side effects, feel free to make them vanish. You've done good. Now, this is going to be a fun part. In front of you, I want you to manifest in, in an instant a full-length mirror. And you're going to be able to see your reflection from head to toe. Whatever pajamas you got on, your entire look. And you're going to look deeply, straight on, into that reflection. You're going to give yourself a makeover. Say this is what I've got on when I'm doing this astral exercise. But what if I don't want to wear that? What if I want to wear a suit? Yeah. I'm going to wear a purple suit with a green bow tie. And you are going to see your clothing change. And you're going to feel this suit. You're going to feel the fabric. You're going to be able to see it as you look with your astral eyes. You're going to be able to feel it. It's going to feel comfortable. And obviously, I believe that we all sleep barefoot or at least with socks. I want dress shoes. Just to look snazzy. And then... They're going to morph onto my feet. They feel very comfy. And they look stylish, too. Now, as for my hair, what if I'm not exactly fond of the just-got-out-of-bed look? Or maybe I want to change my hair color. Let's say I want to make it blue and uh, with a nice Elvis flip. It's going to change, too. Your eye color, if you want to change that, if you want to make your eyes glowing, you can do that. If you want your nails painted, there they are. Whatever color you want. If you want to wear, like, necklaces, earrings, uh, regular rings, any kind of jewelry, they're going to be there. And you're going to see it in the reflection and... Just looking at yourself. 
Now, if you want to change your appearance entirely, say you want to take on the look of someone famous. We'll just say, for the sake of argument, Ryan Reynolds, because I have seen him on so many commercials that it's already in my head. So, let's just say I take on the appearance of Ryan Reynolds, and look at me now, stylish. And obviously, I'll look a lot older. So, um, you can take on the look of any person. You know, you can take on the look of a, a family friend, a relative, a teacher, associate, you know, co-worker. You can transform into their look if you want. And you don't have to do this. I'm just giving you examples of, like, how to change your look and how fun it can be and how useful it can be changing your appearance. Now you can even do something drastic. Say you want to become a large dragon and of course you're going to have to make the mirror bigger in order to be able to see yourself but you're going to feel yourself morphing into this dragon. You're going to feel the scales start to grow on your body. You're going to feel your tail grow. The wings pop out of your back. Your, sh your teeth are going to grow nice and sharp and your face is going to elongate into a snout. And you may even feel some horns grow out. And you see yourself looking very stylish, very fearsome. Maybe even majestic, depending on the type of dragon you morph yourself into. This is another form of energy manipulation. And that is because in the astral, the soul can take on many forms. And in fact, in the uh, video of energy manipulation, where I taught you the beginner's energy manipulation, I taught you how to change your soul while still in the body. You may not be able to see it. Other people may, may not be able to see it, but you'll feel it. You will definitely feel it. But in the astral, you can see it. And other spirits can see it. All right, so make the mirror go away and feel free to either keep the look or transform, you know, back into your regular old self. Doesn't matter. But that is a another lesson learned. Um now Okay. You're going to levitate. So you're just going to... I find, like, what I do is... I envision myself... Holding my arms out of my sides. Making my hands, you know, go in an upward pose. And then as I slowly lift them... I feel myself getting lighter and lighter, and all of a sudden, I'm levitating off of the water's surface. There's not much to see since it's an empty void, but it, it feels fun. Now, using uh, just your mind, go left, go right, uh, go, uh, maybe you can go side to side, zigzag, maybe set a waypoint. Like, uh, imagine a red dot right in the center of where you're at. See one in the distance. Fly over to it. Doesn't it feel fun? It really does feel like you're flying. Because you are. In spirit form. Now, look back over to the one you just flew from. Go back. You don't even need wings. You don't need a broomstick. You don't need any kind of propulsion whatsoever other than your own mind. Now, for the remainder of the lesson, you can remain airborne. It really doesn't take that much energy for your spirit to be able to fly. So you can stay airborne if you want. And in fact, I find it's more fun just to do so. <laughs> Alright, so you are going to now 
test something. Is there a uh, a show about, let's say, magic? Uh, Merlin, American Horror Story Coven, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Supernatural, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, you know, one of those where you've seen them perform some kind of magic that you wish you could do. Well, now's your chance. All right. So here's what you're going to do. You are going to set up a mannequin. It could be an old scarecrow, an old dummy. You could even make it an enemy of yours that you always wish would get their just desserts, you know, if that is a prime motivator for you. See the target right in front of you. Now, for the sake of argument, and as a, an example, I want to send a bolt of lightning towards this target. So I'm going to feel the energy grow in my hand, and it's going to be your dominant hand, which is my right hand, and I'm going to feel the electricity surge, and I'm going to actually see certain sparks in my hand, and I'm going to see it until I feel like it's fully charged. Now, I am going to send the electricity towards this and see it explode and catch on fire. Now you try. Woo! What a mess. Good thing I don't have to clean it up. And, um... There are other things you can do. I'm going to actually show you another thing. All right. So uh, do you guys know, like, the uh, in archery where they have the bullseyes? Make one of those and make it a decent-sized one. Right in front. Maybe a, a little distance away. Take a look in your dominant hand. You're going to cup it like this, and all of a sudden you're going to see three throwing knives. Take a look at these knives. Do they look old? Do they look new? Do they look stylish? Maybe they're made out of gold. Maybe they're jewel encrusted. What are the blades made out of? Iron, steel, silver, you know? Are they really, really sharp? Yep. Yep. Oh, and they're serrated too. Now, you're going to take hold of your throwing knives. You're going to hold it by the blade and you're going to hit the middle target without even trying. Just think about the middle. Woo! And I got bullseye. And you're going to do the same with the other two. Just think about the bullseye and and then the next. Yeah, three of them in a bullseye. And that is because you don't have to have perfect aim in the astral. All you have to do is know the target and it will happen. It also goes to show you whenever you cast a spell on something in the physical, you don't necessarily have to know where this person is at all times. If you had to know that, then magic would be totally useless. All you have to know is the target, and magic will find its way there. It is both a very powerful and also very dangerous aspect about magic, which is why a lot of people tend to teach you that only light magic is the way to go, and that... Use your magic wisely. While I know that the key to perfectly balanced magic is doing the light with the dark, but I mostly work with light magic. A nice spiritual PSA for y'all. Alright, 
So, I'm going to do a final bonus one. I wasn't originally planning on it, but you know what? I'm, I'm in a generous mood. I'm going to teach you something. Okay. You are going to create a live person. That's right. Now, this person can be... Anybody. Technically, I wouldn't make it anyone that you are a fan of. Um, you can make it a burglar. You can make it an enemy of a, like, maybe in a movie that you've watched or a video game. I'm going to make it a Spartan soldier. And the reason for that is I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so I'm really in that ancient Greek mood. So I'm going to make him a, a Spartan soldier. And he's going to have his armor and his spear. And I am going to instill him with the need to hunt me down. You will do the same with this. Once you create the person, you see their look, and you know the kind of person they are, send an energy to them about how you want them to act. And that action will be to come after you, to hunt you down. Do not worry, they really can't hurt you in this realm. But, just for the sake of argument. All right. Now, this person cannot see you right now. And while they're distracted, turn yourself into the ancient Gorgon Medusa. Feel the snakes growing in your hair. Feel your fingernails growing longer, thicker, and sharper. Feel the scales. And also feel your legs morphing into a long snake tail. Now slowly slither towards this unsuspecting victim. Sneak up right behind him. Now, have him turn around and look you directly in the eye. Now, cast the infamous gaze of stone and turn him into a stone. Once you've done this, you can leave him as is, or maybe you can use some super strength to punch the statue into a million pieces. Now, the beautiful thing about this is you don't necessarily have to be a woman in order to turn into a female character in the spiritual realm. You can turn into anything. I have also, I've done this before, and this is just to practice my uh, spiritual offense. And uh, it's just really incredible. And you can really feel everything about Medusa instill in you. You can even feel your legs have changed into a long, slithering snake tail. So that is really something interesting to get into. A very powerful lesson. Um, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if there's anything you didn't understand, uh, feel free to ask me any question you like down in the comment section, and I will help you through this. Uh, meanwhile, if you have any comments, or, uh, if you want to share your experience, which I highly recommend, with uh, everyone else down in the comment section, please do so. I want to hear how this has affected you. And um, keep practicing this, and I will share more of my knowledge with you as we go on. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my new videos when I upload them. Uh, and also share this with as many people as you feel would like this content or are looking for something more in their spiritual path. That is it, everyone. Have a safe spiritual path and a good night's sleep.